Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're tackling a really interesting problem that's all about scheduling and finding bottlenecks. It's called find the minimum amount of time to brew potions. We'll break down the logic step by step and turn a tricky problem into something super clear. Let's get started. Okay, so here's the setup. We're in a lab with a number of wizards and a line of potions. We get two lists. One called skill for the wizards and another called mana for the potions. Our goal is to figure out the absolute minimum time it takes to get all the potions brewed. The core idea is that we have an assembly line. Potions move down the line of wizards. A potion can't skip a wizard, and wizards have to work on the potions in the correct order. The time it takes a wizard to work on a potion is simply their skill level, multiplied by the potion's mana cost. The real trick to this problem is the synchronization. A wizard can't start on the next potion until they're finished with the current one. But also, that next potion can't even start its journey until we're sure that every single wizard down the line will be free by the time it arrives. This is the main puzzle we have to solve. So, everything comes down to figuring out the correct start time for each potion. We can start the first potion at time zero obviously, but when can the second one start? Or the third? Each potion has to wait for the one before it to clear the path. We need to find the exact moment this happens. After a bit of math, we can derive a formula for this. The start time for the current potion is the start time of the previous one, plus a certain amount of waiting time. This wait time is the maximum delay, caused by any single wizard in the line. We have to check every wizard to see who creates the biggest bottleneck, and that's how long we have to wait before starting the next potion, just a quick heads up. We'll be walking through the solution using Python, but don't worry if that's not your main language. I'll be showing the full code for other popular languages like Java, C++, and JavaScript towards the end of the video. Okay, here's the complete code in Python. It might look a little dense at first, but it follows our logic exactly. Let's break it down into smaller, more manageable pieces. First things first, we pre-calculate something called a prefix sum for the skills. This is just a helper list where each element tells us the total skill of all wizards up to that point. It's a handy trick that lets us quickly figure out how long it takes a potion to get through a sequence of wizards, and we'll be using it in our main calculation. Next, we set up our main loop. We initialize a variable, potion underscore start underscore time, to keep track of when each potion begins its journey. We start it at zero. Then, we loop through all the potions, starting from the second one, to calculate their individual start times. Inside this loop, we'll find the bottleneck for each step. This is the heart of the algorithm. Inside our potion loop, we have another loop that goes through the wizards. This is where we use that formula from earlier. We calculate a difference value for each wizard, which represents the delay that wizard introduces. We keep track of the largest one we find, because that's our bottleneck, our wait time. After the main loop is finished, our potion underscore start underscore time variable now holds the start time for the very last potion. The total time is simply this start time, plus the time it takes for that final potion to travel all the way through the line of wizards. And we calculate that using the manner of the last potion and the total skill of all wizards, which we have in our prefix skill array. So, how efficient is this? The time complexity is big O of n times m. This is because we have a loop for the potions, and inside that, a loop for the wizards. The space complexity is big O of n, where n is the number of wizards, because we use that extra list to store the prefix sums of the skills. 